For my final project, I learned about network theory and, in particular, small world networks. A network, or graph, is a collection of nodes and edges with each edge connected to two nodes, but with each node potentially connected to any number of edges. In this project, I looked at random networks, which are constructed probabilistically. This topic is related to statistical mechanics because of the probabilistic nature of the networks. As an introduction, first let us look at a very small network. This network has 20 nodes in red, and each node is connected to its four nearest neighbors. Therefore, there are 40 edges on this graph. We can randomly add edges to this graph to make it a random graph. If we set the probability that a random edge gets added to 0.2, then there are eight random edges added. This graph shows a similar setup to the previous with the random edges added with a probability of 0.2. One property about these networks that is interesting is the average path length and the distribution of path lengths. We will define a path length between two nodes as the smallest number of edges that one must take to get from one node to the other node. For example, in this graph, the path length from A to B is 1. The path length from A to C is also 1. But the path length from A to D is 3. When shortcuts are added in the network, probabilistically, the average path length over all the nodes decreases. For example, in the graph with p equals 0, the average path length is 2. Here is a histogram of the path lengths with probability 0. When p equals 0.2, shortcuts are added, and although the average path length is still close to 2, it is slightly lower. This histogram shows the average path length for p equals 0.2. We can examine the average path length in more detail by looking at many probabilities. Here is a network with 50 nodes, with each node connected to two neighbors. Increasing the probability adds shortcuts and decreases the average path length. This plot of the average path length divided by the average length at a probability of 0, which is 12, shows that the average path length decreases with increasing probability that edges are added. For low probabilities, the average path length is near 1 and then drops to 1 12th for a probability of 1. Note that the graph is fixed at 1 for small p, since there aren't many shortcuts. After looking at networks with a small number of nodes, I looked at networks with larger numbers of nodes. This network shows a thousand nodes each, each connected to its two nearest neighbors. The probability that random edges are drawn is 0.02. This network is similar, but the probability that random edges are drawn is 0.2. Here's the histogram of path lengths for p equals 0.02. Note that the average path length is 51. Here is the histogram of path lengths for point p equals 0.2. The path lengths are a lot shorter. Note that the average path length is 11. If the probability is 0.55, the average path length is about 6. This situation can be thought of as 6 degrees of separation, a phrase commonly used to describe the interconnected nature of human acquaintances. Looking at the network, it looks very dense and connected. The next thing I did was look at a real-world network. Examples of networks appear in many different disciplines. For example, datasets provided by Mark Newman at the University of Michigan include dolphin social networks, power grid networks, neural networks, journal article collaborations, and the internet. Other examples include applications in biology and road networks. The network that I chose was the network of American football games between Division I colleges in the year 2000. Here is a visualization of the network. Each node represents a college football team, and the lines connect teams that played each other during the year 2000. Just this information does not tell us a lot. However, the data has values for each node indicating which conference that each team is in. So we can look at just Big Ten teams, for example. Here, the Big Ten conference teams are shown in green. Looking only at these games, we can see that they occur mainly with other Big Ten teams which makes sense. Using Python to count how many times these games occur, we find that of 124 games played by Big Ten teams, 36 were played with other conferences. We can also look at what conferences the teams in the Big Ten played. Here's a histogram of teams in other conferences that teams in the Big Ten played. Conference number six, or the Mid-American, is the most frequent. Note that conference two is the Big Ten conference. The average path length for this network is 2, which implies that college football teams are very interconnected. Here's the histogram of path lengths for the network. 